Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the whole full Excuse me. In this lesson, I want to make this straight to the point and get some bring out some uh, bring out understanding on what Deuteronomy the twenty third chapter and the seventh verse seventh verse is talking about. So let's get straight into it. All right. So this is Deuteronomy chapter twenty three and verse seven. It says, "Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother." Right, and that's pretty much where I'm going to stop there because that's pretty much where the focus of uh, the lesson will be and that's pretty much the focus of uh, what certain individuals have been focusing upon specifically members from the IUIC have twisted the scripture and now saying that you can't hate the Edomites right which the so-called Edomites today would be the so-called uh, they go by the so-called uh, they call themselves white people right because when you look in the scriptures there's no such thing as Chinese people you'll not see black people you'll not see uh, white black Chinese, Japanese, you will not see none of that. You will not see Caucasian, no European, right? People are known by their nations, Israelites, Edomites, Moabites, Ammonites, Ishmaelites, Hamites, right? Japhites, and so forth and such, right? So the so-called right, white race today, they are really the biblical Edomites. So reading Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7 again, it says, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother, right? Now, some individuals in IRC, and you never know, it may come up in the future, uh, you know, oh, we're not supposed to hate Esau and things like that. And that is not what the scripture is saying. This is why, as is written in the book of Timothy, if I'm not mistaken, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman maketh itself not ashamed, right? Rightly dividing the word of truth. So we have to bring under, or we have to get understanding on what is Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 7 is talking about now I want to focus on the first thing where it says abhor because a lot of people are saying abhor means to hate when abhor does not mean that matter of fact i know the uh, the apocrypha will come in handy i believe it's uh i want to say it's the 38 chapter Okay, it's 30th chapter. Let me do something real quick. Uh, let me find this. I have a feeling that this is going to also say the same thing, but let me see what it'll say here. Give me one second, Bob Kusha. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Right? So, again, Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 7 says thou shalt not abhor an edomite for he is thy brother right now let's focus on the let's build a foundation for this and let's build upon this lesson let's focus on the first word abhor abhor does not mean to hate abhor as i'm going to pull up in the definition means to detest to dislike something right or maybe i shouldn't say dislike you gotta choose my words very carefully because people could uh, uh, use that against you pretty much to dis detest something when you go into, as I have here, abhor, and I'll even go back so you can see it. When you look up abhor, the etymology for it, it goes back to Latin. It's a compound word. Ab meaning away from, and Latin, I'm going to try to say it's the best I can. Horore or horror, horori means to shudder, right? So when you abhor something, you pretty much abstain from it stay away from it right you did you detest it if i'm not mistaken that's one of the words that they used here right it says to load regard with repugnance to dislike intensely in, intensely right when you go into the uh etymology of the word Right here we go to be remote from, vary from, differ from, be out of harmony with. So you pretty much keep away from it. Doesn't mean to hate. Just because you keep yourself away from somebody doesn't mean that you hate them, right? So don't twist up. Can't we cannot twist up the words and sit there and say, "Oh, because uh, matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken." 
Right. Even in the NLT, it says, do not detest the Edomites, right? Now, we'll get into what the word really should be there, but it says, do not detest. Meaning, don't, you know, be like, ah, shy away. Abhor does not mean to hate. Also, to back that up with other scriptures, Salakia for the... Matter of fact, let me do this real quick. Maybe that will drown out the sound. Okay, so I don't need this. Uh, let me get the scripture here. Let me get in there. So this is uh, Sirach chapter 38, right? And this is going into honoring a physician and using the herbs and things like that. For some, if I'm not mistaken, for some part of this chapter. But I'm going to focus on the fourth verse. This is Sirach chapter 38, verse 4. It says, The Lord had created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. Again, meaning what? Abhor meaning to detest, to stay away from, and things like that, right? To keep back. And even when you have it here, this is the GNT, right? Bible Gateway. I'm using the GNT translation. S same chapter and verse. It says, The Lord created medicines from the earth, and a sensible person will not hesitate to use them. Right, because if you hesitate on saying like, uh, I don't know if I should, uh, it's looking kind of nasty. I was told it tastes kind of bitter. You think I should really use that? That's abhorring. It means you're kind of detesting. You're kind of like, I don't know if I should use this. I don't know if I should touch it. It look a little nasty. It smell weird. Right, you're kind of keeping back from it. Right. I uh, hope I didn't get rid of this. Oh, Salakia. <laughs> good i didn't right when you go back here away from to shudder so you're like i don't know i don't know about the herbs or pretty much let's use this example children when you try to feed young babies and things like that how do they treat the green when you bring vegetables and things like that and you put it on their plate right you put carrots peas and things like that how do children act when you put peas and carrots on their plate don't they when you try to feed them it they kind of move their face they turn to the side right they put their hand up and try to push away the spoon, right? They abhor the vegetables. They did, they pretty much uh, uh, keep away from them. They don't want you to feed them that, right? That's what it means to abhor, to keep away from, or uh, it says to shudder. <clears throat> All right, so that is the first thing we want to go into where it says thou should not abhor, meaning... Uh, again to keep away from now when it says thou should not abhor an edomite for he is thy brother we have to understand that that is a clerical error right when you go into the interlinear right now they have here for edomite adamya but really the proper way that you say edomite in the hebrew according to the paleo hebrew which the paleo hebrew which would be adawam now here it is, Strong's definition, Edomite has H1, H123 and H726. Now, when you click on this, it takes you to Arawamya, which this would be Aram, right, or Syrian. Now, when you go to the Strong's definition right here, Awaram, Awaramya or Aram, it says a clerical error for H130 and Edomite as in the margin. So Syrian, right, it's a clerical error. Where it should say Syrian, it says Edomite. Now, I want to pull this up for us to get an understanding of what is a clerical error, right? This is a clerical error, just Googled it. Clerical error, it says a clerical error is an error on the part of an office worker, often a secretary or personal assistant, the phrase may be also used as an excuse to deflect blame away from specific individuals such as high-powered executives. Okay, so pretty much a clerical error is on the part of the office worker, right? Or someone, whoever made Blue Letter, whoever the people were that put it together, however it happened, there was an error on their part, right? Because when you look at, let's go back to, right, how they say Edom. Oops, Sakya. Right? Ada, Adamya. Now, when you read Hebrew, you read from right to left. That second Hebrew character right there, that's a da. Right? Now, the da and the ra, 
in the uh, Assyrian Hebrew looks very similar because when you go to uh, what the hell, Slakia. The da looks very similar. I'll just click it here. To the ra, right? You could see that it looks very similar. Now, if you know the Hebrew, you will be able to tell the difference. But to some, if you take a quick glance at it or whatever, it'll look very similar. So that is the clerical error on their part, right? It should not sit, it should not say in Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 7, thou should not abhor an Edomite. What it should say there is thou should not abhor a Syrian, for he is thy brother. And why should it say Syrian and not Edomite? I will go into the history and prove why it should say thou shalt not abhor a Syrian, right? So now some people will sit there. Okay, let's again, like I said, let's prove that, right? What you see for face value here, it says thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, right? But like I said, I'm going to prove that why it should say, and like it said, it is a clerical error. It's an error on their part a mistake that they made because they most likely or very likely confused the da and the ra because they look very similar right so i'm going to prove how this should pro this should really say thou should not abhor a syrian for he is thy brother right and we're going to go into the history of as to why uh, i'm going to start at genesis 11. now i'm going to start with abraham's father right Here we go. It says the family of Terah, right? Now, just to give, go back before Terah, Terah, who is of the lineage of the sons of God, he goes back to Shem, right? Because if you read this whole thing, it starts with the, well, where is it? Right, here we go. The descendants of Shem or the line of descendants from Shem to Abraham, right? So even Terah, who is the father of Abraham, goes back to Shem, right? So just to give you, to help you understand that this is a bloodline thing. We're starting off with Terah, but Terah goes back to Shem. Who does Shem go back to? No. Who does Noah go back to? Pretty much all the way back to Adam. So you understand this is a bloodline thing, right? <clears throat> now, when you, as we're starting off here in the 27th verse of Genesis, the 11th chapter. Now, these are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begot Lot. So Terah had three sons, Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, right? And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. So again, Terah had what? Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Haran begat Lot, and that was the end of that right there because Haran died. So now Terah has two sons left, Abraham and Nahor, right? And we know that from Abraham comes who? Isaac, Jacob, Jacob's name gets changed to Israel. Therefore, you have the 12 patriarchs and then you have the nation of Israel, right? So keep up with me. But now we have Nahor. So who comes from Nahor? Fast forward sometime in Genesis to the 22nd chapter. This is Genesis chapter 22 and verse 20. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abram saying, behold, uh, Milcah, which Salaki, I didn't continue reading that in the 11th chapter, but Milcah is one of the wives of uh, uh, Nahor, uh, Nahor, right? Matter of fact, let me just go back to that actually. Right, just to prove that. Uh, going back to Genesis 11 and verse 29, it says, And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife, right, which at the time before Abram was called Abram, his name was, I'm sorry, before Abram was called Abram, he was called Abram. So I apologize if I say that a couple of times. All right, so the name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Melchah, right? So now going back to, Genesis chapter 22 and verse 20. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, right? Saying, behold, Milcah, she had also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. Now, again, just to bring it back, Terah had three sons, Abraham, Nahor, 
and Haran. Haran died, but he begat Lot. Abraham, we understand uh, from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob, tends, gets names, gets chained to Israel. Twelve patriarchs, the whole nation of Israel, right? We get that. Um, but we have, um, sorry, Nahor, right? So Nahor has descendants as well. Now remember, Nahor is related to Abraham. They're of the same seed line. They're of the same bloodline. There's family, right? And didn't Gen I'm um, sorry, not Genesis, Deuteronomy chapter 23. It says, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. But again, with understanding that it's a clerical error and the word really should be there, Syrian, thou shalt not abhor a Syrian for he is thy brother. We're going to get an understanding as to why you're not supposed to abhor a Syrian, right? Which these people are not really Syrians, right? They didn't descend from the land of Aram, but they were living in that area, right? Um, so verse 21, it says, Huz, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Kemuel, the father of Aram. I'm going to try to say his names as best as I can. And uh, Chiz, I'm going to say it's Chesed, and Hazo, and Pildash, and Jidlap, and Bethuel. Bethuel is very important. And Bethuel begat Rebekah. These eight Milka did bear to Nahor, Abram's brother. Right? And who is Bethuel? Let's just go into it real quick. Bethuel, as you can see there, nephew of Abraham, son of Nahor by Milka, father of Rebekah, and also he's the father of uh, of Laban, right? Now, hold up. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Where is that? Hmm. I'm trying to remember. Where is that? Is it Genesis 25, if I'm not mistaken? Oh, give me a second. I'm trying to remember a precept here. Okay, we'll just go here. All right. So this is uh, Genesis, the 24th chapter. I'm not going to read through the whole chapter, but going through this chapter... Pretty much, Abraham instructs his servant to go get um, uh, his servant. He instructs his servant to get a wife for his son Isaac. So, this is Genesis chapter 24 and verse 1. It says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham, I'm sorry, Abraham, Salakia, said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of Canaan, Canaanite, of the Canaanites whom I dwell. Right, and also just to give you a little bit, that the putting the, your hand under the thigh was an ancient way of making, putting somebody under an oath. Right, just so you don't look at it as weird, like why are you putting your hand under a man's thigh? It's an ancient way of, of making a man keep an oath. Verse 4, But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Right? And when you go through the story of this chapter, basically the servant did that and he went to what? Uh, to uh, Mafeka. Let's see. Let me see if it says where they were. Remember, these are these people are related to Abraham as well. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's Padanaram. Oh, perfect. Right here. Verse 10 it says, and the servant took 10 camels. Sorry. And the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Right, and this is just pretty much him making a prayer. Here we go. 
Rebekah is chosen. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out who was who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. So you're seeing what? That these people, right, who were the descendants of Nahor, are related to Abraham. That's why he told him, don't find a wife, for, uh, don't make my son find a wife of the Canaanites. No, go into my country and to my kindred and get my, uh, my son a wife, right, from my people who are of my bloodline, right? And they went in, uh, the servant went to what, Mesopotamia, to find, uh, to go to where Abraham's uh, family was at, those who are related to him, right? Okay, so okay. So now just going back to Deuteronomy chapter 23, and verse 7. Again, when it says, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, it really should say, Thou shalt not abhor a Syrian, for he is thy brother. Why? Because if you guys, he, what Moses was relaying to him is saying that, look, you have family over there in the land of Syria. They're not Syrians, but they you have family over there going back to your forefather Abraham because Abraham had a brother right because remember these are the five books of Moses Moses got the history down from the most high so he's giving this history down to the Israelites that look thou should not abhor not an Edomite but thou should not abhor a Syrian right when it means Syrian it's not talking about actual Syrians but what these people were dwelling in the land of Syria that's why they were calling themselves that if I'm not mistaken it was uh, Bethuel was known as Bethuel the Syrian. Laban was also known as Laban the Syrian. Right? So that's why it should really say, and it's a clerical error, it should say, Thou shalt not abhor a Syrian, for he is thy brother. Because those people that may be dwelling in the land of Syria actually go back to Nahor, who Nahor was the father of, I'm sorry, Nahor was the brother of Abraham, your uh, your forefather. Right. And you should not abhor them. You should not not want to get with them or detest them or keep away from them because these are your people. They're of your lineage. They're of your bloodline because your forefather had a brother who had descendants and they were living in the land of Syria. Therefore, if you ever find one of them or if any of them ever come to you, do not abhor them. Don't keep away from them don't detest them don't want to not have anything to do with them because they are your kindred they are your family and even going through the history what your forefather isaac even had uh, uh abraham made his servant go find a wife over there which is your fore foremother rebecca from there and then even with the history jacob after having to you know depart from his family because Esau wanted to kill him. He went over there to Laban and lived with him, if I'm not mistaken, I believe, I want to say more than 14 years. I could be, uh, it could be maybe 20 years, if I'm not mistaken, but I want to say more than 14 years because I know seven for Rachel, but then he was deceived. He got Leah instead, and then he worked another seven years for Rachel, right? So Abraham came from Mesopotamia, but then the Most High called him, and then what well, he started dwelling in the land of Canaan, a place where he was a stranger. And then what well, again he made, uh, he had a brother, Nahor, who was dwelling in the land of Mes Mesopotamia, dwelling in that land, in that area, right? And they are kindred, they are family, right? Isaac's wife, Rebekah, comes from that area, right? And then Jacob, later on, Jacob had to depart from the land of Canaan and go over there and was with Laban who was called Laban the Syrian. So this is why you're not supposed to abhor a Syrian for he's their brother. These people aren't actual Syrians, but they are they are called that because they're dwelling in the land. A uh, little thing to know is that even Abraham will be known as uh, a Chaldean. Not saying that Abraham is a Chaldean, but because he was dwelling amongst the Chaldeans when he lived in Ur of the Chaldees, some people would even call Abraham a Chaldean. The same thing like, okay, I'll use myself for example, living in New York. Some people say, oh, you're a New Yorker. There's no such thing as a nation of New Yorkers, but because you're living in the, I was about to say the land, or the area of New York, you would be called a New Yorker. See? <clears throat> so really, after explaining that uh, the abhor thing doesn't mean to hate, it pretty much means to keep away from, right? 
and after ex getting into what uh, the word there should not be Edomite, it should really be uh, a Syrian or a rum, because again, going into the history, what? Going back to your forefather Abraham, he had a brother and he had relatives over there in the land. And that's why you should not keep away from them, because if they ever want to come into the land, don't hate them. They're your family. They're your relatives. Don't abhor them. Don't keep away from them. Right? Now, to even give further proof that this is a clerical error, right, I'm going to give you one example. And uh, I believe it's 2 Samuel, a chapter, the 8th chapter. Now, when you go through this chapter, this is David. As you can see, David's military victories, David is basically going around conquering the other nations. Now, I'm going to go and jump to the 13th verse. Because the 13th verse shows that they have made a clerical error, right? And that they made an error on their part and they never fixed it. Which I believe there's also other, other errors also that show that's a clerical error. Clerical error, but I like this one the most. So this is 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 13 and 14. I'm going to read it as it is. It says, And David got him a name when he returned from the smiting of the Syrians in the Valley of Salt, being 18,000 men, and he put garrisons in Edom throughout all Edom. He put garrisons, and all they of Edom became David's servants, and the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. All right, so if you just read that through, you're like, oh, okay, David took down the Syrians, and then David put garrisons in Edom, and okay, the Lord prospered him. But if you open your eyes or squint and really see, hold on, wait a minute. Verse 13 again, and David got him a name, right, which pretty much a reputation, when he returned from the smiting of the Syrians in the Valley of Salt. The Valley of Salt is also the Dead Sea. Now I have a map pulled up here, and that's why the Brother Bakwa always talks about knowing your maps. Now, this is not the best map, but this is what I could find. The Valley of Salt as you can see here, you have the kingdom of Judah to the left, you have the kingdom of Moab, and underneath it, you have the kingdom of Edom, right? Now, it said, when you read it, it said, of the Syrians, the Syrians are north of Israel, next to, if I'm not mistaken, that would be the Sea of Galilee that you see right there, that sea right there, that's the Sea of Galilee. The Syrians live north of Israel, the Syrians are not south. This sea that you see right here between the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Moab, that is the Valley of Salt. That would be the Salt Sea. That is where Edom is close to. So that proves that that is a clerical error when it says Syrian, because the, the, uh, the Syrians don't live near the Valley of Salt. Esau does. And even when you go back and read it in the NLT, So David became even more famous when he returned from destroying 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. The NLT has it correct. Because again, Edomites dwell near the Valley of Salt, not Syrians, when you know your maps. And also, even verse 14 proves that it's talking about Edomites because it says, and he put garrisons in Edom. So you mean to tell me after taking down the Syrians, if you were just to read it as is, and then he put garrisons in Edom. It's like, where was the jump from Syrians to Edomites? No. In verse 13, it's talking about Edomites, but it's a clerical error that they put Syrians instead of Edomites, showing you that it is a clerical error. And they've made an error, not just in Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 7, but also here as well, because they get the Da and the Ra confused. So instead of putting Edomites as it should be here, they put Syrians, but again, when you read that in the Valley of Salt, Syrians don't dwell near the Valley of Salt. The Edomites do. So it should say there, the Edomites, not the Syrians. And verse 14 even adds to that because, and he put garrisons in Edom. So after having slayed them, I'm going to put garrisons now in this area because I've just conquered this area. It would make no sense. I just took down these people up north in Syria. Well, let's go all the way down south and now let's put garrisons in Edom. No. After you conquer an area, then you put garrisons there. So verse 14 adds to the point proving 
that's talking about the Edomites. And he put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom, he put garrisons. And all they of Edom became David's ser servants, right? Having having conquered them in the Valley of Saul because he was making war with them in their area, right? So just to wrap this whole video up real quick, going back to Deuteronomy chapter tw uh, 23 and 7, abhor does not mean to hate. Pretty much it means to keep away from or to push back from. Or let's just say keep away from, right? And it says thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. It's a clerical error, and I've brought out examples that's a clerical error in 2 Samuel, the 8th chapter, the 13th and the 14th verse, that they get the Da and the Ra from Edomite and Assyrian confused. Therefore, in some verses, they'll put Edom, Edom or Edomites when it should be Syrians. In some places, they'll, they probably put Syrians when, it, I'm sorry, they probably put Edomites when it should be Syrians. They mess that up, right? And even going into the history, it, you wouldn't have, uh, it shouldn't say Edomites, it should say Syrians. Going into the history with Abraham, Terah had what? Three sons, Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Haran died, you had Abraham and Nahor. We know from Abraham comes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the Israelites, right? The 12 tribes. Nahor had what? He had his sons, and from Nahor, he had uh, Bethuel, right? Who was also called Bethuel, the Syrian. I apologize i was trying to find that verse i was trying to remember where it was but i couldn't remember it so i can but i know it's written in, in the scriptures from nahor you have an individual called bethuel or he, he got called bethuel the syrian because he was dwelling in that land and from bethuel the syrian you have laban the syrian and rebecca right and what rebecca married isaac right because abraham gave his servant the charge to go find a wife from my people from my kindred from my country and that's what the servant did and he brought rebecca to isaac even later down the line with uh with jacob jacob went to padanaram and dwelt with laban who was also called laban the syrian and jacob married rhea and lachel who was laban's daughter uh daughters and if I'm not mistaken, I believe also there's a scripture where it says our father was a wandering Armenian or Syrian, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see if I can find that and then I'll end it. Our father was wandering. I know there's a scripture. Hold on. Let me see if I can find that. How is it written? Our father was a, I believe it's our father was a wandering Armenian or Syrian. Let me put it. Okay. We're going to have to Google this because give me one second. Oh, it is Armenian. Is this? Oh, this is not it. Deuteronomy 26. I don't believe that. Saying twenty six and five. Yeah, that's incorrect. Oh no, I put hold on. Twenty six and five. Oh no, it is okay. So I can. Oh, why did I think it was somewhere else? <clears throat> This is Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse 5 it says, And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, A Syrian ready to perish was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And that's talking about Jacob, because if you read it on the NLT, it says, 
you must then say in the presence of the Lord your God, my ancestor Jacob was a wandering Armenian who went to live as a foreigner in Egypt. His family arrived few in number, but in Egypt they came they became a large and mighty nation. So even Jacob was considered a Syrian because not because he's of that lineage or he, he's from the line of Aram, but because he was dwelling in that area, just like I gave the example with wherever you may be living, Ohio, North Dakota, Washington, I don't know, New York, New Yorker, you're not a New York. There's no such thing as a people of New York, but because you're dwelling in that area, they call you a New Yorker. All right. It's very simple, very easy to understand. As it's written of again in the book of Timothy, study to show that self approved unto the Most High, a workman make it, uh, that is not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You cannot tell us that the Most High hates Edomites and the Most High is going to pretty much get rid of the whole, uh, according to Obadiah, the, uh, the first chapter, that the Heavenly Father hates Esau. He's going to do away with them, but we're not supposed to hate Esau. We're not supposed to, because uh, according to them, the abhor means to hate. We're not supposed to, you know, hate Esau and things like that. If you, I'm going to put it this way. If you don't want to hate Esau, if you want to love him, go right on ahead and you do that and you see where that leads you. As for me and my house, we're going to hate Esau, which this is a household of one. And we're going to hate Esau. We're going to dislike him. All right. I'll leave it there. Lord's will in this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to all for elect. Shalom.